704. Welcome to uh, tonight's Appropriation Committee meeting. Uh, tonight uh, we have uh, first public comment on the agenda and then uh, we're going to be discussing the budget tonight um, in preparation for uh, uh, Thursday's public hearing. Great. And uh, so it's really we will Tonight we're up for any debate or discussion on positions. I'm not sure if we want to start taking uh, uh, motions and uh, uh, voting on some of the articles. Um, I just uh, Ben just gave us a uh, motions document today. We can do that tonight. Start a few tonight or uh, uh, do it Thursday after the public hearing. Um, it's definitely a lot of quite a few articles, so there's some that are just to get out of the way, I guess. Right, so there'll be 30 um, articles that the Appropriations Committee will take a position on, and there'll be 27 of those that will, the Appropriations Committee will make a motion on. Make them on. We should hang on to it till the timer. Yeah, that's great. So first on the agenda, um, public comment. Um, we don't believe we have anyone here for public comment. So it's on to the next agenda item. Um, although, uh, minutes, do we, can, do we see any minutes? No. Pass forward. <laughs> okay, so. You will. We don't have any minutes to pass, uh, to vote on. So next is discussion of the budget. Okay, you had talked about several methods for doing this, and one that you had talked about was going through the line by lines that start on page five of this budget, but I, I don't know if you have settled as a group on how you want to go through the budget. Uh, there's a, a good line-by-line -line presentation starts in landscape mode on page five of the package that uh, you all had, that April 9th package. April 9th. Okay. It's on the drive-in. Uh, it's on the drive-in. will help point us there. We've shared that. And if we had our naming conventions, Next year, we're going to have new naming conventions. We have a lot of documents with similar names. I'm just going to throw up the, it looks like the um, April 9th version is not up there. I'll do that right, right. The April 9th version, so you're going to share that out right now? Yes. So there's a, a fresh resharing of it. On the drive. Okay. Um, you, you should get an email, right, that will tell you it's just been shared with you again. That's coming out now, Ben? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll momentarily. Isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> I, I think uh, file naming, you know, in the world of Google, this is, we're transitioning to Google for the value and it's a good value, but the file naming really has to be uh, the heart of the whole thing, yeah. right? So, and that's just one idea. I mean, if you have other ideas, the way you'd like to go through it, I mean, there's... Uh... Yeah, section by section is not a bad way to do it. Ben, did you sign that yet? Uh, so it is now posted on the Appropriations Committee drive, and I will um, email it out as well. Or could you just use the share button to share it, and it'll pop right up for everybody? Yeah, is that, absolutely. That works, too. Can you send me a, an attachment? Yes, absolutely. Next year, I'm buying you a uh, <laughs> my own laptop, your own town laptop for this responsibility. You can put it in a lead sealed box in your trunk <laughs> so it doesn't <laughs> violate the parking lot rules at your office. Wasn't the big of a crowd at the common, it was the weather. It was, yeah, I'm sure. The rain, yeah. The storming, the light, thunder and lightning. I actually was in Boston. I was volunteering um, downtown, so it rolled in the rain. <laughs> 
So I, I don't see it on the shared drive. Um, So, the name of it's four nine. Uh, yeah, four nine. Still in the name. Yeah, it's four nine. <coughs> it's actually it says eighteen, but I'm just gonna. Read Is it four dot nine dot something? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Four dot nine dot eighteen budget pack. Uh, yep. Yeah. And it, it should be. It, it, it's should 19, be nineteen. So just I just updated that and I sent it out via email just. To We used to be able to line for the marathon all the way along the side of the road, right. and now they've kind of condensed the space right. um, for security, which is sad because that used to be like where all the towny people would go was further down. Because when the media trucks pull out, then you can kind of move in. Right. Um, so it's yeah, and then you could like get high fives from all the runners and stuff. The kids used to enjoy that. So disappointed that we can't do that anymore. But yeah. understand the reason why. Got it. Thanks, Ben. So the overall budget increase is the overall budget increase. Well, let's turn to page one of this document and talk about that. If that's the best place to look at that. So I like the other sources and uses presentation. That we have in the appropriations report. And I would hang my hat on. This right here. Page eight. Um, You know, we present it in so many places in so many ways. And then it's printing over. I guess the reason I'm asking is um, I think the number that the overall budget increases, the operating budget seemed to be higher than that amount, both the school as well as um, you know, some of the public safety. So I'm just wondering how we got to a lower amount. Is it in the operating budget or is it in other parts of the budget? Sure, so the, the total expenditure increase is 7.66%. Okay. Uh, in terms of the tax impact, because there's some offsets there with other, other receipts, ambulance receipts, um, funds from the Library Foundation for help for, to assist with debt service. Um, but in terms of the overall increase in terms of tax levy, it's 5.42%, um, with 2.93 from new growth and 2.5 from the existing tax base. I guess if you if you look at either the net sources or the net uses on the sheet, it goes from 74.96 million to 80.70 million, and that would be the dollar change. Which page are you on? I'm sorry. I'm trying to, for, for a high level question, I'm trying to stick to page one of the document okay. that Ben's trying to send. Yeah. It, it's been signed. Yeah, yeah, you all have it? I have it. Okay. So that's where you can track both the sources and uses which are in balance, right? So they, they're going up, the uses are going up from 74.96 to 80.70 or 71. Do the cherry sheet um, offsets 
reflect the governor's budget or the house's budget? Uh, the governor's budget. Um, the budget that was released um, by the House Ways and Means about a thirty-four thousand dollar difference. Um, an increase. An increase, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so should we be considering that? I know that's not final, and I don't know what the Senate's going to do. Yeah. Um, it's still not final, and it's not that much of an increase. If we chase the whole appropriations process, it would be, I think, kind of problematic. Okay. So if it was a million dollar increase that was being proposed or, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, it, but it seems yeah. like it's a, it's a change in an estimate that we know is going to change again. Uh, so we have not updated the whole package with that. Okay. So this potentially is showing less revenue than we may be getting because. So we basically have to take our best guess just because yeah. we don't get the budget till it's not finalized until July. Yes. Yeah, uh, so so you have the House budget, the Senate budget, the vetoes from the governor, and then it goes back, right, back and right, forth, and right. they, they, whatever they can override. And, right. and then there's the bigger guess on local receipts, you know, on what that number will come in at. So, so the, the estimate on the state aid kind of pales compared to the estimate of local receipts. Dave, what's the other, is there another big item that's variable on the front end, on the revenue side? So, so that everyone should remember that um, these are all estimates. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So I, 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 any and most of the revenues that we were projecting here are estimates based upon, you know, our best guess in trying to maintain a, a reasonableness, you know, and being fair and, and equitable and mm -hmm. presenting the right information. Um, I believe even as we got closer last year to town meeting, a lot of these items changed at the last within the last week. Yeah. So that there were, you know, some things that the depending on tax impact, you know, if that if it's material, we could try to apply it right. up until up right up until if it's not, we could let it flow, flow to free cash, mm -hmm. you know, and, and try to put some of that money aside. You know, and, and likewise, there are estimates built into the expense side too, like snow and ice, things yeah. that we don't know what they'll be. So, so there, there are a lot of estimates in the whole uh, balance. Hey, Tim, it sounds like it explains itself, but could you give me an explanation of um, what the free cash, uh, capital, and other uh, is identifying so you're you're looking at page one of this document I am and you're in the box that's highlighted I am in the box that's highlighted and you're it's, uh, asking about the nine five million dollars got it and then the 234 in operating free cash and then the capital free cash yep I'm assuming operating free cash is free cash from the operating budget last year that didn't get spent no no, no? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, Dave has explained this to me once, so rather than having me explain what I think he told me, I'll ask him to explain the break. <coughs> so um, the two, uh, starting from the top down, the 234-800 is the um, wait, wait soon, thanks. We, we uh, are funding something through free cash. This year it's free cash that's in the operating budget. Um, so that's why that one's in its own category. So rather than it being a capital, capital um, per se, it's a, it's a part of the operating budget. Um, it's a big expense, but we were able to clear some room. The 1995. So before you move on, I'm sorry. So when you say this year for fiscal year 2020, that's what we're going to be spending towards the operating budget That's correct. from free cash. Okay. For storm Thank you. water for storm water management. And okay. can you tell us can you tell us why we're doing it that way when we have unused levy capacity? Um, we do not have unused levy we do not have unused levy capacity. We have a top line that was set by the Board of Selectmen in this budget meets the top line set by the Board of Selectmen. What was the top line set? It was to have a two and a half percent impact tax impact on the existing tax base net of new growth yeah, that was an amended amended message right because the original yes, message was three percent uh yeah, 2.92 
And then there was direction, which is uh, uh, within the purview of the board to adjust as the process went on, and we have done so. I think, did, um, did uh, I the answer your question? The bottom line being, though, we're, we're, we're spending for the operating budget from free cash in this particular line, the 230 some odd thousand. Which means in this year, line, but is it a recurring or a non recurring item? So the stormwater. Um, so it is a recurring item. So so that item ends up being and I know that this is pennies on, on the eighty million dollar budget or whatever, but um, that ends up being part of the base next year for the levy increase or the levy limit calculation, correct? It's but this year it's coming out of operating budget. Next year, it, it assumably wouldn't be. So we, we will have free cash next year and I would, not, uh, I would not advocate for continuing to fund the same operating expense out of free cash every year. Right, okay. So and again, although you said this is a small amount, if we're trying to keep the tax levy down but we don't have anything finalized, um, I feel like we're just playing a game here, you know, it's, why not just put it into the budget because we always seem to come, you know, we say that this is a budget and this is what we're anticipating the tax levy to be, but then it always seems to come down lately lower because the receipts come in greater than we thought or we get more state aid. Um, and so I feel sometimes that we're not paying, you know, we're not, the expenses are lower when we're forcing them to be lower when in fact the tax rate is going to meet the, the message from the Board of Selectmen. So the budgeting is conservative. Mm -hmm. So you, t that, and that means estimating low on revenue and estimating high on expenses so that you don't run afoul of, uh, uh, you don't run into a real problem where you have to lay people off or you have to interrupt projects and incur all kinds of start and stop costs. And uh, if we probably would not have free cash at the end of every year if we budgeted tightly on revenue and we budgeted tightly on expenses. Right. So instead we budget conservatively and I think that's why we have the free cash. Some of it is that- Isn't technically free cash taxing people more than we need to because we don't spend everything that we, all the tax revenue we've brought in? And again, this isn't, I mean, I, it, this it, is a discussion we should be having with the Board of Selectmen. I'm yeah. sorry to be, you know. But it all evens out over time because then if you have free cash, it's what we don't, it's if we're reckless with the free cash year over year, and I'm assuming that we're not, we are kind of whatever we, mm -hmm. the items that we spend it on, we usually pretty much need. Yeah. So but it does allow us a cushion that if we don't have the free cash for whatever happens, the lo local receipts don't come in as expected or, or the governor's budget's not as high, that the next year we don't have to be, we, have, we can cut down on can skip a year on some of the, the capital items that we need or, or push it off to another well, year. And that's typically what we do. We have that, we have better control. Although I do agree, I'm, this is like the first year I've seen that we're actually using free cash for operating expenses yeah. that are recurring expenses. And that is not something we want to do. No, I, I agree. And I think, I, I personally forward. think that this year the, uh, and I, I, speaking out of turn without having them here to, to give their say, but, um, it seems like the number two and a half percent is taking on this life of its own right now and being able to say, you know, we're not going to go above two and a half percent when the operating budget is increasing more than two and a half percent in a way that affects the taxpayers. It's just we're kind of we're doing a little bit of a shell game yeah. here. Um, you know, I there's there's part of me that totally agrees with you when I see year after year we have you know, a couple million dollars, a million and a half to two million dollars in free cash um, that's coming from the prior year's budget. I think to myself, all right, we collected money from the taxpayers that we didn't need. Right. Is that appropriate? But I also have been on the Board of Selectmen with a lot of people who said, you know, let's run this like a business. You know, we got to run this like a business. There's no business out there that cuts it so close that there's no wiggle room in the budget whatsoever. And, um, and so I think that when we start looking at percentages 
and I look at the $2 million as a percentage of an $80 million budget, you know, that's about 2.5%. Um, there are probably very few big companies out there, uh, public companies, that are going to cut things within 2.5% and not have any way out from that point on. You know, especially when you're talking about it, you know, I mean, I'm looking through a budget here and maybe, maybe it's put into a different bucket, but this year I'm looking at uh, $0 allocated for employee training. Um, you know, and I think that... So that, there, there is... Um, personal, uh, personal. It, it falls under the HR budget. Okay, so that's, that's, so that was one of my questions in the report. <laughs> I'm like, right. how can we do this? <laughs> right. <laughs> That, that's a relief. But, uh, you know, I know that in the past, you know, in speaking with Mr. Kamala about, you know, how much he spends on training, he's always looking for, you know, extremely efficient ways to budget training for employees for, you know, whether it's Microsoft, Microsoft skills or, you know, something else. So um, the, the $2 million doesn't bother me um, that much. Uh, but I guess this, this, um, incredibly strict adherence to uh, this two and a half percent number this year it seems it seems um, uncharacteristic from prior years um, and we seem to be jumping through hoops that we wouldn't normally jump through to in my opinion unless I heard some other explanation of what's happening it's it's a relatively artificial number when it's presented to the to the town meeting members and the taxpayers and the question I guess is it sustainable are we just sort of by eating into this free cash are we just kicking a can down the road and setting us up for a problem so, so that's kind of the, the yeah. thing about free cash uh, to just in defense of the concept and you've all kind of raised this issue is uh, it's true that we are taxing and taking and took that money and then it shows up again at, as free cash when something doesn't get done or money doesn't get spent because jobs typically because jobs are vacant for part of the year and you know personnel budget which is 70 percent of our budget doesn't get expended and then uh, that that feeds into the free cash or projects don't get executed or purchases don't get made or Ben finds efficiencies in making a, a buy so the good thing is then that money doesn't just get spent as it would in the federal government and I'll tell you straight up that's what would happen there is no free cash in the federal government it gets spent and it stay and it comes back and then it goes back to the town meeting to be appropriated again so it's true that the town is holding that money that a, a tighter budget wouldn't hold uh, but it's not being spent and it's it's being used again and you know, you could do an exercise and lower the level in that lake and there would be a little one-time pause where people would feel a little one-time, uh, a little one-time benefit, which I think would be about, I want to say 20, 20 cents for the average taxpayer. I think, you know, it's a penny for every $40,000 on the average house. To, if we drew that down and then we wouldn't have that free cash we'd be operating in a much tighter uh, much tighter environment so I think there's some merit to the way the system works and if we had five million in free cash on the space of budget that would really kind of beg some question but it seems like uh, the money is not being squandered and it's not going astray it just keeps cycling at that consistent level through the system so it's like someone driving around with a tank full of gas and another person drives around with a quarter of a tank of gas all the time. Every time they're out, they fill up to a quarter of a tank. Well, we're, we are fill up to a little more of our gas tank for driving around. I guess that would be the, the metaphor. You can stop that practice and you're only saving that one piece of a tank full one time and then you're driving around with an empty tank when the hurricane comes. So. So the bottom line is those two free cash numbers in that section are both basically how free cash is being allocated this year for spending. It's not. Um, uh, right. Um, so we have 3.2 million in free cash. Mm -hmm. We're going to be using 2.23 uh, million um, in the proposed FY20 budget. The other portion, uh, the remainder of that is being is targeted for FY19 um, snow and ice deficit, mm -hmm. and we at the prior town meeting at the special town meeting we allocated two projects 
capital projects. I can't remember for the amount. Uh, so if I could refer you to page three of the um, the document that Tim. Uh, that, that's an outline of, of the expenditures of free cash. Page which? Page three. 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 Okay. Uh, about a hundred thousand for prior year bills, fifty-seven thousand for the fire communication system, and one hundred forty thousand for the Lake Maspinock Dam gate. That's so to gate. sort of build on what Tim said. Um, so right now we're we're covering a lot of deficits for the current year. We're we're doing a number of capital projects. Um, so if we were to tighten up on the revenues, our estimates to lower the, you know, impact, we still would have to address these capital assets as part of the, the ongoing budget process. So it would still impact the people, it just would be uh, six months later than we normally are doing. So taking advantage of the free cash by the, the surplus free cash. Mm -hmm. So snow and ice this year was what around 1.1 million or so altogether. So what did we have? 350, 350 from last year. We're, we're still waiting for a number on that. Um, they haven't got all their bills in yet. So is 742 an estimate, or 742 is the bills we have so far? 742 is an estimate as of this point. Oh, okay. Didn't seem like that bad winter, yeah. did it? <laughs> I'm sorry? Didn't seem like that bad a winter. The end, the 16 inches we got in March. <laughs> so it's, uh, again, it's not necessarily just um, the, the rain and snow, it's also ice. Mm -hmm. So they have to go out and sand and do things like that. So, so back we, we never even got any snow, but there was a nice buildup. Back up on page one in that same section. Um, what's the other bucket that's $1.1 million? So that's, um, we have um, resources. So um, the ambulance uh, has its own uh, receipts reserve that they take in from there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a $525,000 um, influx from that receipts reserve into the general fund to cover the ambulance budget that's in the you know, bus budget. Um, we also do the Title V loan. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that service that gets transferred to the general fund. Uh, those are the other two. Uh, so <clears throat> oh, yeah, premium on bonds, the uh, library foundation um, to assist with the debt service, um, about approximately 400,000, and then a higher estimate for the, the resale of surplus property. Uh, rather than a trade-in, we'll be putting things out about the auction or bid. So it's other outside sources that we have on hand. And why is stabilization at zero in that same? So we're not taking any out. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we put more in. Right. Yeah. Okay. What is the uh, current level? Uh, so 208,000 is what we're putting in um, this year. Right. And what what is in the fund right now? Yeah, I have a. I think more. it's actually in the appropriate uh, report. The balance in there, or Sorry, just? Sorry, I didn't read it so that much detail. <laughs> yes. So uh, we have a little section in there about our investments, and that's one of our investments. Four, would it be four thousand? I mean, four million. Uh, yeah. OPEB. Okay, other trust funds. So I can pull that up while we're talking. The report. Oh, four point one. Let's see. So I don't know who just wrote those in. Is that a comment you put in? Would be about 4.1. But I actually have stabilization trust fund has a balance of 3.43 million, with an additional proposed to be added. So that was the number out of the investment account on March 31st. 3.43 million in the stabilization fund. And, and I think the 4.1 number you're referencing there, Tim, is that would be if it was 5%, which is the recommended um, level by the DOR. Right. We also have a capital stabilization fund that's at 321000 The capital stabilization fund was at 216 and you're saying it should be at 321 mm. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to uh, Unless the funds are split into several accounts. 
but that's what the our brokerage account is showing. So we're slightly under if we were at 5% with that um, contribution for stabilization. We're still slightly under 5%, correct? Uh -huh. yeah. right. And the only reason I raise that is we're having good times now. Those aren't, these aren't gonna last forever and that's when we have to dip into the stabilization fund. So again, just like this, this is my mantra. Right, no, <laughs> it's- We'll peg in with the stabilization, I feel like rather than trying to target a 2.5 percent because that's just a number we should be considering trying to save some money now as well um, while we do have the increased you know receipts and, and new growth so one of the things that we put in the uh, appropriations committee report is that the stabilization fund is invested in a mix of investments with a 30 percent common stock allocation which is riskier than we have our normal daily weekly receipts and disbursements and which we have in like money market demand accounts so uh, if you, if we think times are going to be good it's very prudent to have some money in stocks so that we get a better return uh, the, the trick with stabilization funds is they're supposed to be there when things are bad so if you have a bad turn in the economy and you have your stabilization funds in stock uh, that can backfire on you. Mm -hmm. But we've made some good returns lately on that stabilization fund. So one of the things we should be thinking about in the long run is what's our risk profile for that fund. Yeah. And if it's, uh, we need that money to be available in the worst of years, uh, maybe when we hit the target point, we should think about the asset allocation in that account. Who decides the investment strategy for that? Excuse me? Who decides on the strategy? So the treasurer is charged with that duty, has a statutory charge for doing that. And as my employee, I supervise that, and Norman does too, and we are beginning quarterly reporting up through the Board of Selectmen. So the treasurer will be making a report to the Board of Selectmen next Tuesday. To report in recommendations? Like, would he, what would they say? So we will listen. We will listen. We'd listen to what the Appropriations Committee has to say. We'll listen to what the selectmen have to say. Uh, so we have our current funds in the safest investments that are yielding us about 2.3% now, 2.4%. We have the stabilization fund in a mix with 30% equities that's yielding us quite good returns over the last few months. And we have the OPEB uh, up to 55% equities, and that's been yielding us very good returns over the last few months. Uh, so are you talking we've only changed this over the last few months? or We haven't changed it. This is what they've been. But we had a bad, you remember there was a little cliff uh -huh. in the fall and stocks went down, and now they've recovered and they're bouncing back up. So we had a reporting period where our, our asset allocation uh, didn't, uh, produce good results over a one period and we have recovered from that and so uh, having watched that little blip we're, we're talking about what our risk profile should be in these three different categories so our operating funds are in the most conservative possible place our OPEB is weighted 55 percent with stocks and we don't expect to use that money in the next 10 years uh, so the big question is, is the stabilization right about halfway between right. those two? Mm -hmm. Or should we take a different risk perspective and uh, cut back on the equity exposure in that portfolio, mm -hmm. giving up those gains? So we have an investment advisor, but the investment advisor can really only tell you what's a good portfolio for your risk profile mm -hmm. and your risk appetite. It's really up to us to decide what mm -hmm. our risk appetite is for, for uh, uh, pursuing gains on those funds. I can uh, give you okay. the updated balances if you Sure. So um, in the general stabilization, it's 
3.433 million. <coughs> Capital stabilization is 320-300. And OPEB is 2.45 million. So capital is 320,000 or? 320,000. Okay. 300. Yeah. So I know that um, part of the AC review is to make recommendations. What if we went back to the Board of Selectmen and said we wanted to see some of these funds in funded more this year? I'm rocking the boat a little bit here, but we tried to get that message across last year and it wasn't heard. Are we talking OPEB? OPEB and the stabilization as well. Just putting that out there for us to think about. So what would be the recommended, um, based on our operational budget, what should our stabilization fund be at? Five million, right? Yeah, four point four point one million. million. I'm sorry. Four point one. And before our contribution, it's at three point four, and we have a planned two hundred thousand dollar contribution, which brings it to three point six, and we could have some gains. I mean, it's not a uh, that that is not a we're not terribly far behind there. But again, we're having good times right now. Exactly. I, I, so I we're like a half a million <clears throat> off. I mean, that's probably too much to ask, but. I'm personally less concerned with the stabilization fund because that's a nice to have cushion. Um, but OPEB is an obligation. It's essentially, that's an obligation based on services we are getting today that we should be contributing today that we're I used to use the term, we're just kicking that one, kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. It's going to, so we're asking future generations to pay a cost for services that we're benefiting from today. And so they, they recommended it was 800000 and we're yeah. putting in 400000 Yeah. So, so the actuary mm -hmm. recommended. That was like 625 from the actuary. Yeah, there was, there was two glide paths the actuary had. One was 625 escalated 3% a year. And one, the other one was about eight hundred thousand, and then you wouldn't have to escalate it. But you would just pay that until at, it was caught up. At the same time, I, I think in our report there was a comment that uh, the recommendation, if you're, if we're if we're doing the pay as you go as we are now, um, the recommendation is trying to maintain at least a level of sixty six percent funded, which is where we are. 66% funded for what? For, for the our obligations. Talking for the retirement and not the OPEB. Yeah, the, the OPEB oh, is, the, is the health care benefit. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, I thought I was reading about the OPEB. The retirement is funded at 67%. Okay. The OPEB is funded at a much lower rate. All right. Uh, it's funded at... Uh, Page 23 is the... 3.26% of the liability. Oh. A little different. Yeah. You know, if you go through the history of OPEB, you know, we've only been starting to contribute to it since, I don't know, 2011 or 2012. But at the time when we had the actu actuarial numbers, by contributing 344 to 400, that was actually going to get us on our way. Mm -hmm. right. um, but what happened is, I think because of low interest rates, you know, a lot of it, it's, depending how it was invested, we weren't getting the, the return, so now that's why now our contributions have to be higher because we're not, I think they're saying we can get 8 to 10 percent return every year on OPEB. That was uh, when we had the initial presentation. And I don't think we get 8 to 10 percent on a conservative. On a conservative portfolio, it's your, you'd be very challenged to do that. <clears throat> so we're, if we're using the actuarial $225,000 short, of what we should be funding it. 225 below what the actuary recommended as the ideal funding path. And again, this is not a requirement yet, so that we're doing anything is a good thing. And uh, so, so unlike the pension part, which we're required to be on a catch-up path 
by 2036. Uh, there is no requirement yet to fund the OPEB, just a requirement to report it, and there's encouragement to fund it. Mm -hmm. so. there, there potential, potentially, will be, um, because of GASP 74 and 75, will be an issue with the exposure on the outside for a AAA rating. If we if we are not actively doing something with both of them, and I, I think it's are, it's probably reasonable that at some point there will be a requirement to get to a funding level on a glide path, and the people who are already halfway there are going to have a much easier time when that happens. Mm -hmm. well, I would like to see us fund funded at the uh, six twenty five a month that's recommended. I don't. I don't disagree, and, and I can definitely go to the board of selectmen yeah. and make that recommendation. Is this the year, though? Given the guidance from the selectmen, given what we hear about tax, the burden. I just wonder. Well, we can things. say our recommendation, whether they take it or not. You know, they're. I think you're correct. They're. Mm -hmm. They'll nod their head and not make not recommend any changes. Do we want to vote on the recommendation, or I don't, you know? Well, we can do that when if, if we're done. Okay. I mean, we're done yeah. deliberating at the end. Yeah. Bas basically, vote on what we want to recommend to the board of okay. selectmen. Okay. In terms of operational budget. And I, I believe in the report, there is at least going from the prior year reports, there's a either an endorse there's an endorsement or I guess the alternative of not endorsing the budget. That's the I mean the report is a requirement. Right. I just again I'm feeling like we're not actually having input into the budget and so I think if we can at least recommend something mm -hmm. back to the Board of Selectmen I'd I'd like to do that. Yep. Any other comments on page one? <laughs> we find it <laughs> <at> page five. question about the MSBA reimbursements projected for 2021 what project is that related to the marathon school uh, no is it oh that's the high school that's the uh, high, high, high school yeah the yeah. 1.4 is called out okay for change in the reimbursement methodology right the time I was gonna say I think the MSBA still owes maybe 4% of marathon but yeah. and they're waiting for the final Close out or for the final. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've been following. We've been following this for several years, and actually, we made a note of it in last year's budget report. That when you look at the debt, we, we we made a special chart that shows when you look at the debt that comes off, it's pretty much the uh, the high school. Mm -hmm. So that comes off at the end of 2021 into the 22 budget. So if you look at the debt, you notice the debt goes down two million dollars a year. The debt service, but you notice. And I think 1.6 million of that is our payment, is debt service for the high school out of that 2 million. But you have to keep in mind that 1.487 is actually the reimbursement that we get. So when the, because everyone's saying, oh, the high school's coming off. It's but really the reimbursement goes only going to save us 200,000 a year because of the MSB, MSB mm -hmm. reimbursement. We should probably figure out a way to represent that in the graph. What what of our debt is covered through external sources? That's an interesting point. So the, it's also the library, the million dollar from the library trust. Right. They've had it for the 
they've had it, they'll, they'll have another substantial amount for 2020, and then it'll go, there'll be like 100,000 left for 21, and then it's gone. So it's been over $400,000 uh, for the last two years, uh, 19 and 20. And so there'll be, like I said, there'll be like about 107,000 uh, left to bring down. So we're adding on another 300,000 because that money's not going to be there at the offset. You know, and that, that was my initial concern that they're doing a, an underride for the operational budget. And, you know, to keep it at 2.5%, I guess that'll be possible, but the library was a debt exclusion, so the debt is part of a debt exclusion for the library, so that'll show our, that'll show in our tax impact, but it will not be part of the 2.5%, uh, the, two and a half, the prop 2.5% levy. Mm -hmm. Okay, moved off of page one. <laughs> yeah, I know they have the expenditures by category. That's interesting, but I think this, there's more details in the following pages. Starting on page five, you get the get more information yeah. on that. So on page five, remind me again why the town manager's budget is up 33 percent. Because the assistant town manager was formerly carried as the land use director in the land use budget. And so that was a change in the way that is that position is being funded. So formerly it was the department head for land use, and right. now it's assistant town manager. That accounts for about half of that number, right? Is it the 49,000 that's coming from land use up into the town manager's budget? Plus 108? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a, bit. it's a little bit less than that. Land use planning and permitting. So they're adding other stuff in. So I see their, I just see their budgets coming down by 49,000 so, so for personal services. Yeah, other things happened as well. Okay. So uh, that added into theirs. They've had some, they've had some turnover. They, they had the higher, at a higher rate than they, than they previously had to. And I believe they went from part time to full time. Seeing a shift in assessors between appraisal and personal, is that? So the assessors, it's not, uh, that shift. There's no that, net, that, it's just between the. That little shift was about the sharing of a, there's a shared positions between the assessor and the treasurer and the payroll. And uh, there was a reshuffling of that position this year. Like so the assessors or? have the uh, more clerical. So, so the assessors have a stable workforce. Uh, what they need is more appraisal support for specialized uh, appeal work, like let's say a large liquid natural gas facility or uh, a, bit, a large industrial facility that's outside their skill set to develop an appraisal for, that you have to find very specialized people to do the, that kind of work. So we're seeing uh, we have a program of doing that on a rolling basis. I think next year we're going to look at cell towers to see if we're appraising cell towers correctly. So and are we using outside service? I know we did for the gas, um, yes. the gas facility, we're using outside service. Yes and that. yes, and we're also using it for a couple of potential uh, acquisitions, some land acquisitions okay. uh, that we're using appraisal services for. So if there's, this is a little off topic, but if, if there's if we score a windfall, I guess for lack of a better word, because of this appraisal, how are they paid? 
the appraisal services in a case like where we're revaluing the liquid natural gas facility or we would be going after the cell towers is it a flat fee or is it we we pay we pay for the service and it's not a contingency okay. they're not they're they're they get paid for their service and if we prevail we'll, we'll be much better off and if we don't prevail we'll we'll have spent that money and have found out what the real value is so okay thanks Do you know what the headcount change, the planned headcount change is in this budget? I think I can probably give you the ads except for the school, and I have those on a separate page somewhere. We're looking at a new police sergeant, three new firefighters, and one of your notes today was about why the compensation contingency went up. We had put three new firefighters in the fire department, but there's a grant opportunity that if we hire three, we can get a fourth funded. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we've already hired the three, we can't get the grant. So we're going to hold the, those three in the compensation contingency until we find out about the grant and, and uh, make a move at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have a public health nurse. Uh, I mentioned the police sergeant, the three firefighters. Uh, Half a position in the HR. Half a benefits, a benefits manager to handle the the hundreds of retirees who come into HR to get service on their retiree benefits, uh, and then a number of positions in the schools. And I think you saw in the schools yeah. spreadsheet the, the net changes they had. They did a lot of shuffling, and I want to say there was five or eight new positions in the schools. Mm -hmm. So okay. you're seeing that as growth. Those are the positions. That's the position accretion that I'm seeing. Can you tell us off the top of your head which departments have staff increases? Yes, police for one, fire for three, uh, schools, uh, health, and the half a position you just say HR, HR, and I think that's. I think that's about yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not. That's not a sworn statement, but I think that's all the added positions. What is? What is? I'm sorry. Is Human it, resources. Sorry, HR. Um, one? Half. Half, yeah. And Board of Health? One for a public health nurse. A one police sergeant. Three firefighters. Okay. And then the schools. And I have the package on my desk. I was just looking at it. But they had a complex presentation about four hundred thousand dollars in reduction positions and they were fractional positions and then eight hundred and seventeen thousand dollars in added positions so they have a large growth number most of it's going to salary increases so I think they got rid of they changed from paraprofessionals to full-time aides or they're trying to yeah I think they're trying to support this year with paraprofessionals the no new growth and then they're converting okay. those Right, so <clears throat> five uh, special education paraprofessionals, and there's some offsets. Um, uh, personnel decreases, uh, one literary coach, uh, half a principal, um, three-tenths of a librarian, uh, the guidance secretary from 12 months to 10 months, um, one ELD teacher, one learning specialist, and one special education coach. Um, and there's some additional increases on the, on the other side, the largest in addition to the special education paraprofessionals is three elementary paraprofessionals. And that's Tim. outlined on page 16 of the PowerPoint presentation. So back on the, um, the town, and this might have been prior year, but the move of the um, land use person into the town manager office, was that ever backfilled? No, she supervises the land use department. Okay. So she's she's a also a department head and the assistant town manager. That's my my understanding. She, she and she's I don't know if she physically moved. I wasn't here, but I 
my sense is she physically moved down to the space. The three of us were, were uh, came after that happened. Yeah, I thought so. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. everything was in disarray, and they moved over to South Street for a year right, and a half, and then right. when they came back here, she was just down in the and I, I don't know, did the town manager have a half-time position before that, and he, they, they gapped that and then went full-time? It's really it's not uh, something that you want to talk about. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I have a question on a small line item but um, I thought that in the uh, draft of the appropriations uh, report there is a conflicting number with what's here on page 11 um, for the townwide celebration Hopkinton day yeah. was that money removed in the latest version it was the, there is a plan to fund it through other means uh -huh. We're still, um, uh, again, as we spoke earlier about the revenues being estimates and things haven't finalized. Um, we currently believe that there may be some room that gets freed up from the free time, I'm sorry, from the uh, snow and ice. Mm -hmm. That um, if that happens, we'd like to be able to add it back in, but it has to go back through the approval process. Mm -hmm. If we do that, so there would be a fifty-eight thousand dollar gain back from Snow and Ice, and we're open to fund that, that put that back into the operating budget. What was that line item? Thirty thousand before? Thirty thousand, correct. So I hate to pick it, at such a small line line item, but it seems like that's a number that um, symbolically. You know, I mean, it uh, it shows support for the town and, you know, celebrating the town itself. I know that when we had the 300-year celebration, um, that was the most unifying event that the town has had in quite a while. I mean, yeah, yesterday is a huge event, obviously, every, every year in town, but it's not something that's just for the people of Hopkinton. And um, to me, I think that the intent of still funding this somehow is a great intent mm -hmm. but i think the symbolism of having the number in the budget saying yes we are we are funding this and if the number has to come out of you know uh, snow and ice or wherever else then you know we should be taking it out of that but um i mean i would recommend through you town manager board of selectmen or whomever that uh that that number be replaced and I actually disagree. I think that thirty thousand dollars is half of a FTE. That's what basically is going up in smoke in one night. Um, in other areas of the country, people, businesses contribute to that. They sponsor these kind of events, um, and that we're using town money. Something I've never agreed with. So um, we're just on the other side of the, the spectrum here. I think other money can be not from town money, but from finding a sponsor. That's why you sit down the other That's end of the I'm table, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I, also, I also think we did something similarly for the 300th celebration that we couldn't find it immediately in the budget, and we found a way at, at the end. I don't know, I can't remember how that was done, but you know, even at, after we go through town meeting, if there are some accounts that still have, we do account transfers you know, for small amounts at, after you know, in June in June, so that could be a way it's, it's funded too. Right. Right. That was the plan. That was the original plan, since they had us pull it out. But so end of year balances, so to speak? So end of year residual balances? Yeah, balances yeah, yeah, yeah. That haven't been used. Mm -hmm. I guess for me, I look at it as, um, you know, how the, the optics of it and the message that those optics uh, send, and um, when it's when it's you know sweeping together the scraps off the table to put into a bucket and say, look at that, see we can still do it this year. That's different from saying yes, we're going to fund this, and um, you know yeah we had to take from this this and that you know to fund it. Um, and oh, okay. Now we have this other money left over. Now we can replenish those. It we're, puts we're, it as a so as a so priority. Just curious, how much is left in the appropriation committee reserve fund? 
I think all of it. Have you spent any all of the 125000 Not for this year, right? <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's one or two minuscule ones. Do, do I hear a motion coming to the, <laughs> <laughs> the forefront? Just saying, we do account transfers. That, that's usually one of them because mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had any requests to dip into our reserve this year. Yeah. We yeah. usually go at the end of the year, but yeah. Right. But yeah, <clears throat> I know what you're saying. So well, I'll communicate that to the town manager, that your view, and I'm going to communicate your view unless the group wants to take a vote or take a position on that issue. Does anyone have then we'll communicate thoughts that. on an amount? I mean, if I'm looking 30, at 30,000. 30? Is, is the amount we had in there. Is that, that's correct, right? 30,000. 30,000. I mean, if you want to discuss it, it's the same thing. We have account transfers, so you can either say, we'll put it in here, and then we'll raise the levy on, on folks above, won't be a lot, but above 2.5%, but then and then the, the, the account transfer would either not happen and it would go into the general fund or, or we'll spend it on something else. So, I mean, and if, you, if you think about the way this, the ball bounces through the maze, if you don't spend any of your reserve, that will go into the free cash that will be certified for the 2021 budget. Right. So that's, we're back to this free cash discussion and how that works. So. Well, I would say if we're going to take a vote on this, and we also take a vote on the OPED and the other things, um, which I just feel are more important, quite honestly. So. Yeah, and my my personal my personal I guess stand on this is that I'm not going to I'm not going to vote in favor of anything that increases the bottom line right now. Um, if if people have suggestions of where we could move money from one spot to another uh, and maintain either the same bottom line or lower it and offer that to the Board of Selectmen. That's something I would consider. Um, but I'm not going to vote in favor of increasing the bottom line by 30,000 or 225,000 or, you know, or 255,000 to get them both, so. And I probably would, so. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that uh, actually in the end of the night, I think, huh? Okay. Yeah. For uh, account 542, Youth and Family Services, the expenses are up 31%. What page are you on? 10. Okay. I know there was a change. Yeah, Ben, do you have the detailed sheet on 542, the expenses? You bear with me. I'll pull it up in just one moment. I don't have that off the top of my head. the 542 and I was looking for a dollar amount. I'm like, oh, wait, you're talking about, I don't know. I, I know we, I'm in a room full of tech-savvy people, but I miss actual budget books where <coughs> every number has seven pages behind it, <laughs> and you have a lieutenant who carries the book. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we're not there. <laughs> well, the next one is going to be Veteran Services 543. That, that's up 44%. Yeah, so that's a that's a cost share arrangement uh, with a couple jurisdictions, and it was a recruitment and service level change to try to expand the services. Uh, Doesn't that also depend on the number of people actually being served? The there are cash. So yeah. There's seven people currently. Payments, but it's not. Yeah. Most of it is this is the operation of the support, the advice that the agent provides, which can relate to everything from social security to health care to to uh, education benefits and everything else. 
I think we made a transfer into this account sometime this past year. Was, couple, was it? I remember one like two years ago we had. It. Well, every time we're servicing another per veteran, yeah. it we goes up. Well, that's why I was kind of asking the question: yeah. Is it for there will, be, there will be a um, either reserve fund transfer or a line item transfer at the end of the year? They've already overspent. They're they're allotted budget. Um, okay. I believe I believe it's somewhere between um, eight and ten thousand, but don't quote me. That's a rough figure. So isn't that also a largely reimbursable expense? Seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent. So so the numbers look more impactful when you look at the expenditure than they are because the state is a cost share partner. Uh, but usually the money doesn't show up till the next year. Right. So it's sort of a revolving kind of thing. You pay out and then you get the money back as us. So why isn't it a revolving account? Say it again. Is it possible to set up a revolving account for this? I, like the school has tons of them. That's just love. <laughs> well, so we, we have a sh an expense share. We, we have an expense share too. So yeah. we would have to make contributions to the revolving fund and then get the state share. And I don't know. Yeah, we, I, only, we only receive 75% back. So. I, we're not covering our costs right no say. so I don't under that it's not we'd have not to manage a that they're pulling in a fee yeah we'd have to manage and fund the contribution fee. every year and I don't think we'd be a dollar ahead so you might get a little more but I think we have the opportunity to have that level of clarity without going through the exercise mm -hmm. of the revolving fund okay. yeah we don't want more revolving funds kind of want to get rid of them when we don't need them. And yeah. this, this is a pretty small overall expense. And to circle back on the youth and family services, uh, so substantially all that increase is uh, contracted services for pet therapy. Um, and that's providing weekly pet services to town departments, the library, schools, and senior center, and uh, individual families on an ad needed basis. So we increased the budget last year for pet therapy. They're increasing it further? Just curious, how much of that fifty-five thousand is for pet therapy, therapy dogs? I guess thirteen thousand. Yeah, thirteen to eighty. Thirteen thousand increase or thirteen thousand total? Again, I thought we funded this last year. Well, well. Excuse me, thank you. <coughs> so it's Sorry. funny the things that you said, you know, you're talking about fireworks and uh, therapy dogs. <laughs> Something's not adding up here. Sorry, excuse me if you just. Sorry, uh, it's okay. I, the, the, <coughs> the narrative is out of order, so I, I may have misspoke. Okay, so I misspoke. Uh, it, it appears that last year it was classified under personnel services, the 13,000. So there's a decrease in personnel services for youth and family services for 20, and it's reclassified to um, uh, contract services okay, for expenses. Okay, so there's an increase, so, and it's just getting reclassified. Co correct. Yep. Okay, that explains it. Somebody remind me what the tree warden increase was. I know it was discussed at one of the meetings. Uh, so that, that's a, an increase to, to um, mitigate eight to ten additional trees. Um, that's one of the current budget, about $25,000. So they've had a disease great yeah, so have mitigate so, trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've had As some great chainsaw. luck. Uh, uh, yeah, t take down, you know, okay. fell uh, or uh, you know, trim uh, because Eversource will only do certain pieces of, of the town. So th there may be dead or dying trees that are on other pieces of the road that, that Eversource won't, won't assist with or if they're not near wires, uh, but are still a danger to, to public health. Okay. That's it. So we considered stringing wires near all the dead trees, but <laughs> it was easier to just 
on the tree <laughs> warden to, in the hope that Eversource would then trim the tree for us, but it, it was not the official. Eight for effort. <laughs> but if a tree comes down is that and blocks a road, is that the tree warden or is that DPW? D DPW if it comes down. Right. Okay. Right. Emergency. Tree warden keeps them from coming down. Or, or it takes them down. down. Yeah. It takes them down. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Manage to take down. <laughs> and I, as a new resident, I'm still waiting for my trash bill to come. <laughs> it's the only place I've ever lived where I didn't get billed for trash pickup. So. Don't put in more than one container, or you will. Every time you, you pay your tax bill, you pay your I'm trash. I'm paying bill. every time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't give any ideas. It's another thing you don't want to talk about in public, Tim. Got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's a tremendous benefit. Let me just say. Mm -hmm. Curbside, yeah. yeah. Even in this area. So I'll just call it single pair trash. Yeah. <laughs> or we just stay away from that too. Yeah, I don't know. You're treading on a thin ice there. Okay. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to have lunch. We'll go over all this stuff. All right. So in terms of the uh, 910 employee benefits and insurance, are we kind of at the final number for health insurance at this point? We think, Premiums. We think that is a good number to go forward with. Interesting meeting. <laughs> good, <laughs> we're an interesting meeting. Good viewing. <laughs> like, really good spectator party? sport. Well, I think Game of Thrones was last night, so people need a little break. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or two nights ago. Two nights, yeah. I'm not a follower. Those are all my questions. Or I'm kind of done with the overall budget. Because we, the other ones we had, you know, the representatives yeah. come yeah. in. So to think about the impact of growth, schools we know came in at what is it here? Um, six. Six point six. I think fire and police were around eight and nine. Um, Again, thinking of those areas that are directly impacted. DPW, he came in below, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, at least a, for the, a little not below. The water, there's, so, yeah. there's uh, Well, 
Where I misspoke. Fire says here it's only 1.96%. You know, that's because we took the... Uh, what, the three FTEs out? Yeah, we, okay. we, we put the three FTEs elsewhere. Okay. Pending the grant application. Mm -hmm. You heard from Dave Del Torrio about the utilities, which is one of our challenge areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think you've been through all the capital articles with everybody who had an interest in them. Has the CIC reviewed the ones that they hadn't reviewed? We have a couple here that are pending here. Uh, yes, they have. Okay. Um, they those endorsed. have been reviewed endorsed and endorsed, everything. correct. Everything that was unendorsed. Correct. Okay. So I'm sure it says in the in the um, appropriation committee report, but how much is debt contributing to the overall versus the operating budget? So right, let's yeah. talk. Okay. Let's talk about debt. There's uh, if you look at the sources and uses presentation, the alternative one. I think that's the one that kind of pulls the debt out as a use. So it's on page 12 of the appropriations report and it shows that debt and interest would be 8.4 million next year compared to 9.5 this year so debt and interest go down about 900,000 our discussion tonight has kind of uh, reminded me that some of that debt is reimbursable and we should figure out a way to present that mm -hmm. but we're talking basically about spending 90 million dollars and 8.4 of its debt uh, so that's about 9.4 percent. I would. I'm, I'm not following. Are you on this? This, yeah, that yeah. page. So if you look at the debt service number, mm -hmm. repayment of town debt and interest on the uses section. Oh, uses. Okay. At 700. Or are you looking on the? This is the appropriations committee report. Okay. And so some debt has been paid off between 19 and 20 and uh, we have you know and that graph shows later on but we have 8.4 million in debt service debt and interest and that's a combined excluded debt and uh, in debt that's subject to the two and a half cap because this presentation isn't about the tax cap it's about really what are you spending your money on mm -hmm. do you care whether that five dollars coming out of your pocket is excluded debt or not it's really the tax bill. Mm -hmm. where, where are you spending it? And so also, this shows. Also, just to clarify that, Tim. Yeah, please. So that 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 service also includes other other fund. So that's the CPC is included, and the enterprise funds. Oh, okay. So those those aren't tax impacting. Yep. That's why the number seems to be appear to be different. Is because we're including that those debts in that. So we get the, the revenue in for those from those funds and we pay them out of those funds. Yeah, so there's a couple, there, there are probably a couple things then that uh, impact that, the reimbursement from the schools and then the re enterprise funds. Right. Okay. And what's, um, I know it's in here. I remember reading it. I probably commented on it. What's um, uh, CPC's debt service compared to what their projected yeah, we had that. We, we were just talking today about getting that line put in. The CPC's debt service is on page 21, and it looks like their debt service is about 210,000. I don't have the data table there yet. They're probably uh, going to collect around 1.1 million, something like that. Yes, 
one point three. One point three. One point two is oh. the estimate. Right. But in reality, they'll it'll be one point three because we do this. It, we the do match. the conservative. Right. And and the the match is always it's going progressively getting lower and lower yeah. because of Boston coming on. Yeah. And other communities. And that's just recently. It does not include the um, the turf fields because it's not yet technically been borrowed. So we'll be adding that. I saw your comment. We'll be adding that to the um, uh, authorized but not yet issued um, okay. line on the graph. Okay. And so that and that'll hit them next year, or at the sum. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. So the short term yeah. debt um, <clears throat> next year and the long term debt the following year because it'll be a, a, a short term borrowing. Um, okay. We'll roll into a, a longer term note. All right. And that was what was that seven hundred thousand or three hundred thousand? I believe it was seven hundred thousand. So I can go back and And then what about and then um, they were also authorized for uh, I believe it was a loan for lights at Fruit Street. Was that another six hundred thousand? Correct. And it's my understanding that work has not been done. Um, I think Jay spoke to that a little bit. They were having some trouble with that. Yeah, they were talking about the cost of bringing power out there. Correct. But it's it's money that's authorized that would end up. Being a loan, it would be more Co than correct. So, yeah, exactly. If they were moving forward with the project. So that's a total of 1.3 million uh, possible correct. addition. Yep. Okay. So, but that's not the that wouldn't be the debt service. That would be the debt load, basically, right? That's correct. Correct. Um, okay. So that would. So it actually be a little bit more if it's long term because of the print uh, interest that's involved. Yeah. So it's it's running between. It's running between 2.7 and 3 percent right now. Okay. So but the annual obligation would be, you know, some small fraction. These, these because the the life is, I believe, that fields of 15 mm -hmm. years okay. max, and I think the lighting would be 10 max. Okay. So depending upon how we can work that load. Into so it might be um, around 60 to 70 thousand on one, and okay. Like that. So, so it ended up probably be about another one hundred and twenty thousand onto the onto the debt service. Okay. Are you talking about that's going to be two thousand twenty or two thousand twenty one? Well, part of twenty and, uh, and then 20. and then full bore in twenty one. Okay. So we, you know, we have those other lines showing the projected but not issued for the water fund and for the general fund, and we're going to put that on tomorrow for the. Uh, CPA fund. Great. Just we're talking about that this afternoon. So good catch. Good catch on that. So we're going to need to firm up some language at the end of the introduction talking about your actual recommendation when you decide what you want to do for that. And uh, if there's other points you want to get into the report and you want to uh, send them to us, we'll get, we'll get whatever comments you have in there. One thing Do we I want to, though, rather than just send them without having the committee discuss them, discuss them first? I feel like that's going to be more representative of what the committee is actually thinking for the, for the narrative. Yes. Particular, yeah. yeah I, th I think discussing them and fleshing mm -hmm. out some position would be better than having people send opposing comments in. Right, exactly. Because whatever Todd says, I'll say I'll, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I, we do have one more piece of information I'll share with you now and uh, we were talking about the impact of the underwrite at the last meeting and uh, I misspoke and so day I have asked Dave to prepare a sheet showing what the projections look like for 2021 if the underwrite passes and that's uh, really no under we haven't put it in because it hasn't passed but no underrides have failed yet. So it's probably worth understanding what the impact is. Do you want to pass those sheets down? 
and, and the way this changes is in years 21 and 22, the top line levy base goes down and it creates more pressure on the bottom to balance the budget uh, by the complete underwrite of the 1.18 million shown uh, shown in 2020. So thanks. So if you look at the box, the uh, center column that has the box around it, the one, two, three, the fifth number down shows the underride of the 1.180568 million. And then what that does is create a new top line on 2021 that, com that creates pressure on the whole funding source for 21 and it flows through to 22. So if you compare that to your, the, the version we're working with in which the underwrite has not occurred, you can see that change. So the bottom, it shows a shortfall of $433,000? Yes. And that's with all the uh, funding assumptions. You can see them down here on the right-hand side. That general government will go up 2.5%, that the schools will go up 5%, that employee benefits will go up 6%. So uh, with this underride, our challenge will be in subsequent year to look in there to find that money and uh, look in those places to find those opportunities. Depending upon what the tax impact is that the Board of Selectmen want to endorse and accept. So the assumption of the schools at 5% in 2021, is that an agreement with the school department or that's just an assumption they couldn't even hit 6.5% this year? So um, what, I, what I put these numbers together, it was to try to make it look as though I, were, I was not trying to cook the numbers to make it all balanced because I could do that. I can make it all down in a second. Let's yeah. increase the free cash coming so into the year. What we're trying to do is keep <laughs> it as close to other the receipts. Year. So I, I lowered the overall um, percentage impact by one, per, one full percent from expectations last year because this year they were, they were, there was expansion issues. So I kind of try to level it off a little bit. That's not to say that there isn't room in there. I just don't know that right now. And I didn't want to present an unfair position. So again, stacks of estimates building this thing up. One of the estimates is that growth is going to slow down. So that could mean that cost growth would slow down to some degree to the extent that there's a correlation between population growth and cost growth. In the schools is where you typically see that argument made the most. Uh, and then, all, and then there's an assumption about what the selectmen are going to endorse in terms of uh, tax impact. And we don't know what, what that will be. Uh, and there are assumptions about other receipts. And then there's assumptions about benefit increased growth. I mean, there's a lot of uh, assumptions that every year you go out into the future, they become hazier and they're represented as, uh, as a point estimate, but really it's a widening cone of uncertainty as you get further years out, right? and they're represented by a single set of assumptions on the page. So I just wanted to share that because I think I, I had uh, uh, miscommunicated what the impact would be in as soon as 21. So I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah, you know, and I think that um, I think that there is eventually um, a, a tipping point with the underrides. As you mentioned, you know, there's already been a couple that have been passed in town. Um, this one, if it's presented, um, you know, if I had $10 to bet, I'd probably bet that it will pass. Um, and, ev you know, eventually there's going to be a point where we either need to um, start cutting things that we don't necessarily want to cut or present a compelling argument to town meeting and the voters uh, to pass an override. 
and I look at the other side of the coin though and I look at if the underrides had not been passed uh, in these prior years. And I think that the town's been uh, very fiscally conservative. Uh, I think that Norman has, and, and our school administrations have done an incredible job at uh, keeping things tight and that has brought us you know free cash from one year into another it's given us excess tax levy um, unused tax levy that's uh, come from one year to another um, and I always go back to one of the reasons that um, that our, our board of selectmen had initially started talking about an underride I think it was about six or seven years ago now uh, was because it brought more transparency to the process to the typical town meeting member and the typical voter um, and when that unused levy keeps piling on and you know you've got two million then you've got three million and then if you don't pass an underwrite you're gonna have you know let's say five million it gets to the point where um, un unbeknownst to the typical voter a budget can pass that has much more than a two and a half percent impact on their tax bill um, I think at one point we were up in the 10 to 12 percent range that wouldn't require an override um, if we had been compounding those without any underrides I don't know you could easily do the math you have all the numbers you know we're probably in up around a 20 percent area at least 15 percent area by now um, and I don't think that that's what the taxpayer expects and I think that to inject something that possibly creates an additional you know level of complication and an additional vote but nonetheless creates discussion around what we're spending our money on I think that's well worth it what's, so, what's what has been our increase even for the past like five years it's on the appropriations committee report page oh, how helpful that handy little <laughs> probes report this is actually Mike's graph uh, that shows both the tax impact and inflation it's page 17 One on the left is the tax impact. So I, you know, I think our view is that this is a policy decision, and uh, the elected and appointed boards uh, meet and discuss and debate it and develop a position. And our job is to execute, is to facilitate the discussion with good information, and to execute the decision. And we're trying to fulfill that role. I'll also just add that the more the more of that unused levy that we have on the table, I know that there's a um, uh, pretty widespread perception that it. Uh, weakens the taxpayer's position uh, in, in bargaining. In what? I'm sorry. In bargaining, I think there's there's a pretty widespread perception that uh, having a lot of extra levy capacity uh, weakens the taxpayer's uh, position in, in bargaining. Collective bargaining. You're saying. What does so the underwrite um, do to financial ratings? Or is that that's something? Oh, it's on the page right? there. It's on. That's that's what it is. So the page, the that written page that you have right in front of you there, is has the underwrite in it. And it shows up in this right. column. No, I'm sorry. I mean the financial no. ratings. It's like the bond. bond. She wants to know AAA bond ratings. Oh, that it's kind of yeah. uh, unclear. Yeah, so we've had people tell us both things, honestly, that's and, we heard and that's what's in the paper. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. you know, there are lenders who think that the so, some people think that lenders are most concerned with the 
absolutely unfettered ability to raise money and pay bills mm -hmm. and other people think the lenders are interested in fiscal discipline and those two things are kind of at odds in this particular particular case uh, you know and it may be that there's some of both and they're offsetting and really for any lender it's the ability to repay mm -hmm. that's what all lenders care about is the ability to repay and our town has the ability to repay anything we borrow so uh, we, we do not have the challenge that many communities have so right it's the ability to pay not the ability to spend and so, <laughs> right. and so yeah. Yeah. You know, looking at this underwrite if I had to kind of forecast how I think it would play out it would be that and looking at the debt load which is where some flexibility occurs in the out years mm -hmm. virtually every large thing that we buy in the coming years is going to have to be purchased with an override which is in a, which or be excluded debt it could be excluded debt which is another control and as you speak about inserting and infusing more controls into the process that seems to be where the this additional underwrite walks us to if there is going to be another school it's definitely going to be uh, excluded debt to get there and if there is going to be uh, any new large facility it's going to be excluded debt to get there and that creates another level of approval and another level of review and uh, I'll, I'll also say that the very first underwrite I thought was going to do the same and it didn't <laughs> well, I, there's been some excluded debt. So are you sure it yeah. didn't? Well, yeah, there has been some excluded debt. You're absolutely right. But we've never gotten to a point where we, um, you know, required the underwrite. The excluded debt, those, yeah, right. right. I think that creates some slack in the system, I guess is my point. Yeah. That, that uh, Yeah, when it's something that's outside the operational component. Right. And, yeah. yeah. So Does I think the excluded debt cost us more? No. No, and it comes out of the same taxpayer pocket. So it, it's still impact, but it's impact in which the voter has elected to specifically do that in a layer even beyond the already pretty inclusive method of the town meeting in the annual budget, right? So it's, it's yet another hurdle mm -hmm. for self-taxing. I was actually always a, I'm a fan of the excluded debt just because it ends up requiring a ballot vote. Right. So you know, you have 150 people show up at town meeting, you know, you can, if there's something that a special interest likes, they can pass anything. But right. in that extra check at the, at the ballot, I think if people can think about it or you actually, you'll have more people voting and deciding. Um, so that pretty much at town meeting, almost everything will pass. Yeah. And you really want to be sure that this is what the people want. So we have a, a fire truck for a million two in this year. I mean, that three years from now might be an excluded debt vote rather than a town meeting article. And then you'll find out if the, we, you know, we'll go down that road. That would be both. It'd be town meeting and then the ballot. Yeah. And historically, anything that was like 500,000 or more, we did use as excluded debt. Mm -hmm. The big items. Now I noticed here, just because we we're talking about the OPEP trust is only funded at 500 for the next two years in this. Yeah, th again, Dave just did this today, <laughs> and uh, we wanted to try to present a, a straight crosswalk. Uh, yeah. So, so, and there would I was concerned. <laughs> there would have I to be it down from 625. And there would have to be more adjustments yeah, like that, and, and and those would be the kind of adjustments that people would be looking at. Mm -hmm. But usually we, we have, although I like to see it in the operation, operational budget, it usually is, does end up being free cash that we use. If we have free cash for it, mm -hmm. we fund it. Right. And that's why it, that should be in the operational budget. Right. Make its way in there. So yeah. it becomes an automatic thing uh, year over year. And that's, that's really one of the arguments against uh, trying to grind the free cash down to a very low level, yeah. is we're using that for actually a program now for... Uh, modest level capital needs that we fund f within a single year and so how are we going to fund that program absent the free cash so we we basically use our budgetary surplus for that and if we had no free cash we could find ourselves in a, a place with nine-year-old police cars and 
37 year old fire truck so we well, we'd there. have to come I up mean, with another method yeah you better start buying mercedes now so it's last <laughs> That was Colorado, and you know that's a whole different state. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to see in the uh, message that this is the first year that we're that at least that I've been on it that we're using free cash to pay part of the operational expenses, part of the operational budget, mm -hmm. which should be a concern. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, we'll draft some language and include it there, and you can edit it. Yeah. If that's, did I hear everybody? I thought I heard everybody assent mm -hmm. there. Uh, Mr. Chair, anything about, uh, I know last year, I'm pretty sure last year, um, this committee was making recommendations around some of those recurring costs, like the police cruisers. This year there was an attempt to put it in to the operational budget and then it was pulled out. I know that we can have the philosophical discussions around, you know, free cash versus operational budget and all that, but I don't know if that's a point that um, anybody's interested in as well. I mean, I do believe those items should make their way into the operational budget because once it's there, then you won't have to see justify it because if you budget every year to at least at least two cruisers, police cruisers, then it's it's in the budget year over year. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, because it's a capital expense, if we don't have the funds, we can say, well, maybe you're going to have to have a slightly you, you know older mm -hmm. cruiser. We can only do two. We can't do three. So it gives you it gives, does give you a little more flexibility in the budget. So. To me, it goes both ways. Um, when Could always whether be whether it's DPW vehicles or yeah. police cruisers. Could always be a minimum number in the operational budget, and then if they feel they need extras that year, you know, whether it's because of increased staffing or something happening with one or two of the cruisers. Um, I remember the last few years, you know, the chief was always coming and asking for three, and we always managed to find them two. <laughs> um, so I don't know, just a just something to think about. Um, I, I would, I, I do think that uh, whether it's through a recommendation for this year's budget, or just a recommendation in general, um, you know, the the six twenty five six twenty five plus the three percent each year for OPEB. Um, I mean, I think that we should be backing that. Um, if if we're going to make a recommendation for a change this year, um, I could I could get behind uh, asking for more for that as long as it's offset by something else in the operational budget. So no net impact. Exactly. Do we have I do think do it's we the have right recommendations for the offset? Hmm? Do we have recommendations for the offset? I do. I mean, I'm not sure that'll be. I do. I have a recommendation that uh, we ask the board of selectmen to direct the town manager and finance committee to uh, our finance group to uh, find two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars from somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> life is a circle. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, so just to be clear, is that those particular things are being funded through free cash right now they're not in the operational budget but that that is the point so, so finding that no impact doesn't exist right now because it's not being funded from from that process it's being so it doesn't impact the 2.5 is that what you're saying it doesn't impact the so the the 625 or the right. OPEB and the stabilization funds have been whenever we've been funding them have been funded through uh, free cash. Right. So I think the point that Todd is making that we're using two hundred and some odd thousand dollars of free cash for the operational budget. So if we find something in the operational budget, at least we can. Mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. does but are you saying that if we were to add the two twenty five, it's going to impact that two point five percent? I'm not sure if I'm following. So. 
or if we take I it out of free cash. It's, it's, it's well, a I think game what, of, of, of realizing all the sources that we can apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and seeing how we can fund it. Right, and I'm not I'm not saying that you're gonna come up with new you know fresh money and start oh, printing out the press. So, so the you know, it's got to affect something else. There's something else that's being funded that you know we would have to say okay we're not going to fund that. And that something else is that list of capital pay as you go items because that's where the free cash is going to be spent on. So if we want more free cash, we would stop doing some of those things. Some combination of the things on that list, I mean, that would be the logical place to look. What is our free cash estimate after we? So we have 3.2 million of free cash right now, and we're estimating we're going to spend 2.23. Uh, Did I get those numbers right? Uh, yes, but so if you go to page three of that, that document that Tim shared, there, there are some uses in FY19, um, so the supplemental bills that were approved at, at annual town meeting. Um, the Lake Maspinock um, Dam, yep. the fire communications system, the snow and ice deficit. So the free cash is 3.2, and then when you take those other items off, it's, it's 2.23 that's available. We, we already spent that at the special town meeting, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. No, so we've used all of the free cash. That's the question, yeah. Okay. yeah. We've used all of the free cash from last year. It's okay. already incorporated into, into this all point. the budgets. Yep. In, really, in the pay as you go, is how the last of it gets spent. That's right. On page 18 of mm -hmm. the, the document. In the and if we just. So that's actually buying things like uh, the, uh, the school capacity study, the data center replacement for both the school and the, and the town, the boiler replacement. I mean, so that's the that's the challenge you have is you're further bolstering your long-term standing in the reserve, which I'm in favor of. But if the method is to do it by deferring maintenance on things like boilers, you know that's uh, that's a choice. So another option is just to ask to increase the budget amount by two hundred twenty-five thousand. But I don't think the board of selectmen will go for that. And I think they'll say, what is the offset? Unless our message is that we really need, yeah. don't offer to make those changes, but we're, again, we're kicking the can, you know, especially on the, the OPEB, that even yeah. in, in future modeling, it, it's not even in there at the full funding for the next two fiscal years. So. The, we I mean, the 2.5, yeah, and my contention is just that we, we said last year you're not funding it correctly. It did get funded again this year. I don't know when we're supposed to put the input into the budget. The 2.5% was kind of a an arbitrary number they came up with. Um, and again, it's not, it's not worth going into a huge fight, but I just, I don't know when we're supposed to give the input and, and ask them to do this. It's two years now that we haven't funded it, but the Appropriations Committee is recommending we fund it at. And again, it's good times. I have to be said to, to fund it more. Um, the money, because we've been conservative, you know, may actually just kind of be there um, when it comes time to, to set the tax rates and whatnot. I mean, we can go over the positions that are being added. You know, because we didn't speak to the Board of Health, why why do they need a uh, public health nurse? Public health nurse. What are the um, what are the regulations around uh, snow and ice? And the, you know, we have to reasonably fund it within the operational budget. That's the three fifty. So now we have the seven forty two. Um, I guess what are the regulations around around? Uh, that as a as a debt. So you're asking about a floor. What would a floor be for that? Is that uh, so? It's, you have, so in order, the this is one of the legal deficits that you can carry mm -hmm. from year to year. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be eligible to carry it as a deficit, you have to at least have funded it what you previously funded for the previous year. Yep. Okay. You can't dip below that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so and so once you increase it, 
you yeah. know, as a, as a beginning operating budget for the year, yep. you're stuck. Okay. Okay. Um, the problem is that it becomes if you don't offset it by using free cash or some other leftover thing and you carry it, it, it has the same impact as excluded debt. It goes right to the top of our tax impact mm -hmm. list and hits the taxpayers. You have to cover that okay. particular deficit. So even if we don't have the money to cover it, it's, it'll be it'll lessen the available amount of money next year. Okay. Did you say that had to be, that's excluded from Prop two and a half? Or if, uh, if, you don't, if, you don't, if you don't have the free cash to cover it, it has to be in the operational budget, but can it be excluded from Prop two and a half? Um, it is excluded. Any deficit, any, any deficit that exists in your, in your operating budget, it needs to be raised in the next fiscal year. So it'll be part of the next year's tax. Okay. So it'll immediately go to the top and it'll be, it'll be, you know, less whatever our capacity is mm -hmm. to. Okay, so it is within the uh, Prop 2 and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The um, $235,000 for the stormwater management, mm -hmm. is, that, uh, is that a state mandate? I believe it is. I think that's part of the I believe requirement so. for DPW. I think every year there's a certain amount. I don't know if it's analysis, if, if it's water and you know, storm water analysis, or it's to do certain work on the storm drains that, yeah, that's mandated. It is I remember mandated. There, there was something that was coming through. It was about, um, uh, um, I think it was cleaning a lot of the, the storm drains and that was going to be mandated, but they also kept pushing that off and pushing that off. Um, so I'm not sure if it's finally a mandate now and that's what this number is or, or what. And our current stabilization fund, without this two hundred and eight thousand, what are we what are we at for a percentage? It was three point four or four point one? Is that three point four? four right now? Did you put that five percent? One in there. 3.4 or 4.1 is where we are. No, we're at 3.4. Yes. So we should be at 4.1. Right, so we're at 3.4 or 4.1, which still is... Have, we still have whatever income... 68, 70... We can earn through the end of this fiscal year. Right, and we're having some growth in that fund. That's right. Yeah. So I just... So you're... As of March 31st, I guess that's a, if I had a calculator. And this 200,000 200, represents about a quarter of a percent for us to add on. So we're at 83% of where we should be 84% as of the end of March in that fund of the recommended level. And another 200 would be another 5%. So that 200 is going to take us from 84 to 89% funding, not counting any growth that may occur during that period. Okay. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay. What are some examples of typical things that that would be used for? I think you'd That's use the well, rainy day fund. Yeah, you yeah. can use it for anything. So, so that could be. How many prior year bills is a lot of that they, they a lot of other communities would use that fund for. Mm -hmm. So let's right. say you lost your largest employer and personal property taxpayer, and there were all kinds of negative consequences that happened from that. 
you know, the old Dexter shoe company closing, that kind of thing. That helps you uh, not have to pivot on a dime the day the doors close. Mm -hmm. we, we tapped into that um, after the, the crash in 2010, I think. We were tapping into it um, when we were having zero or one percent budget increases. So, um, and I think it was just, I don't know, I think it was just going towards the operating fund, quite honestly. I, I'm not sure how we were using it, but um, mm -hmm. that's when we tapped into it, which is why I feel like we need to fund it because mm -hmm. it was painful to tap into it and, and a lot of controversy, but, um, and it wasn't, I don't think it was at nearly five million at that point. What I would actually rather see is that we have 300 some odd thousand in our capital stabilization fund, and which is basically we funded it like one or two years and that was it. I would rather see us deplete that and use it for something because essentially what we don't really have anything in mind what that is for. At, at least I'm under the impression. So deplete that for something in the capital projects and use that to fund the OPEP at mm -hmm. this point because yeah. if, if for instead of saying let's not contribute I think the stabilization fund you don't contribute anything then our overall budget goes up now yeah. you're now you're even though you you didn't take any out now you're behind even more because right. the operational budget but the capital stabilization is, is what exactly is that yeah. I would agree with that actually. Mm -hmm. if that was going to be the philosophy right, or, or what you're kind of thinking I'm just throwing stuff around for discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say, I, I would just throw out an idea, and I'm thinking about external people looking at us, bond raters, you know, board, uh, uh, lenders, to use stabilization money in a time as good as this mm -hmm. is yeah. perhaps more egregious than not funding stabilization during good times. I mean, 54% 54, 54 of our new costs are going to be funded from new growth. This is a, we are in a growth posture. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about the signaling of drawing down stabilization to, to, raise a, to raise a different stabilization. I don't know that. Well, the whole purpose when, uh, you know, I was on the committee when we first started the capital stabilization fund and saying, right. gee, instead of borrowing, because it, Every time we bought a truck, we were borrow doing short-term borrowing on everything. We didn't have the free yeah. cash. Right. So we're saying if we just had a capital stabilization fund, we could always use that. Yeah. If the intent the was basically to instead. deplete it and then no longer fund it, then I can see that. Um, I see what you're saying, though. If It's you a know, message. Yeah. You're, hmm? you're, you'd basically be taking money out of one stabilization fund to put it in a longer-term liability fund. Is, is the kind of pasture you would be doing in. But the original intent of the capital stabilization fund, I think, has kind of been lost over the last eight or nine years. You, or you could say instead of, you know, it would be instead of borrowing $1.2 million for the fire truck you apply, you know, that, that kind of saves over the longer term. And that was the intent, you know, for mm -hmm. those kind of purposes. So you wouldn't have to borrow $1.2 million for a, yeah. for the fire truck. Which you'll, although interest rates are kind of, they're still low compared to where they were 10, 10 12 years ago. And so borrowing is not the worst thing just because interest rates aren't as high as they used to be. I think we have you know, our, our meetings going on two hours here. Um, I think we have a couple of themes here to think about. Thursday is our public hearing, mm -hmm. and I don't want to spend two hours after the public hearing debating, because I think we do have to start our motions okay. um, on Thursday. I don't want to start them now at okay. this point. Okay, great. It's, unless we want to have a marathon Not tonight. session, <laughs> marathon. <laughs> Post marathon, <laughs> marathon. Oh, there we go. Um, I think that'll, that'll work fine. 
So, um, <clears throat> if, I, if I could, I, I handed out uh, a draft of the Warren articles and motions. Um, I marked everything with an R that the committee has to um, take a position on, and an M with everything that the committee will um, sponsor the motion on. Um, I also started a draft on another sheet of paper, um, just drafts what the motions would look like um, for your consideration for when we do get to that point of, of making that, when you get to that point of making that vote, um, just for informational purposes. Great. So Ben, the R's are? Uh, making a recommendation. Um, so there are 30 of those, and, and 20 of them, the, the um, Appropriations Committee will be um, sponsoring the motion or making the motion. Do you want a brief rundown of the Brave Acts, or do you want to wait for the next thing for that? Is it just is it keeping you up? If can we if we could if we could do it in you know five or ten minutes, I think we I think we can if you okay. if you're interested in it. So using Ben's document as the guide, it would be Ben's page four, Ben's page three probably. So on page three. The one on the bottom, it says personal property tax exemption, and that's actually an error. It's, it's real property tax exemption, that there is no personal property tax exemption. So we're going to remove the word personal in that because otherwise it's, it's, uh, it says the wrong thing. Uh, and So that's all the different exemptions that people get. And we had uh, a little analysis document that I saw passing through my office this morning, and I don't have a copy of it with me, that has the impact of that. And I'll bring the dollar impact at the next meeting. But it's a small amount of impact. I think we've had this one on yeah. the warrant every year. Every year. The, the year. next one on the top, the first Brave Act one on the top of the next page. So it's on page four, and I guess they're still not numbered, but it's the top one, increase the abatement amount, not to exceed the cost of living. And that is an error where it says in the last clause of that, and to establish the amount of increases in all f fiscal years. Uh, so we think that's, that's not, that last clause goes. It is to link it to CPI and, and to have that happen. And we calculated that with the number of people who get those abatements now, the inflation adjustment was going to be under $100. So the... Okay, can, can you give us more background? Because I absolutely have no clue what the BRAVE Act is. Okay. Uh, so... Provides that now. So there are exemptions... Uh, there are, and again, I should have had that page with me. There's, there are modest exemptions to property taxes for certain categories of veterans. Mm -hmm. So a disabled veteran, a 70% disabled veteran, might be entitled to a $1,000 tax exemption. Okay. A widow, uh, a Purple Heart recipient. Uh, there are categories of people, and I'll bring those categories uh, next time. Uh, and this would give COLA to those exemptions, so they're not staying at the thousand dollars forever. Okay. The next Brave Act exemption is you can only get the exemption above if you are the homeowner. So if you're the veteran and you own the home, you get the exemption. There are apparently some small number of veterans who have their homes titled in trusts. And this would allow them to still get the exemption if their home is titled in a trust, because those people are not eligible to get the exemption uh, under the current rule. So we don't know how many veterans there are who would be eligible uh, to, who, who have their homes titled in a trust, who would be eligible for this modest exemption, uh, and whatever the, the cost would be the multiple of however many people it was, but a, a nominal amount of people for, for the exemption. The next one on the top of page five is the largest one, and we don't know if we have any of these cases, and it would be a complete tax exemption from property tax for Gold Star parents who have lost a child in combat. 
So I don't know if the number would be zero or one or two for our town, but for those people, they would receive a complete tax exemption. So a very small number of people, perhaps none, uh, but a total benefit, a complete benefit. It's not a partial exemption. And the final one is to add veterans as a class of people with the, I won't say the elderly because I think I'm eligible, but with people over 60 who are allowed to do tax work off. So this would allow veterans who are 41 or 53 or 39 or 28 to come in and work off up to $1,500 of their property tax bill. Uh, and again, we don't, the, the cap would be $1,500. We don't know if four people will take advantage of it or seven or nine or zero. Uh, but the impact to the tax pool, I mean, if it were nine, it would be $14,000 for that provision. Uh, you know, the previous provision, the average tax bill is $12,000. So if we have two parents who have lost children in combat, that would cost us $25,000 in the tax pool. And then going back, uh, if there's one or two veterans who would be eligible uh, because their house is in a trust for an exemption because they're a disabled veteran or a, a wounded veteran, not just a veteran, uh, that would be a few thousand dollars more. And then the cost of living, the pool that we spend is pretty low, and you're talking about a couple of percent on a fairly low pool. So in the hundreds of dollars for that. So I think if we have, if we have no Gold Star parents, the whole bill for the whole thing could be under $20,000. If we have a, a, some Gold Star parents who would benefit from this, then uh, depending on how, what their houses are and how many there are, that would be the expensive provision. And uh, that's, the, that's the Brave Act. Thank you. These are I'll, I'll, veterans of any, any, any veteran, regardless you, of when they served, where they served. You have to. There, are, there are criteria for the, for qualification, and uh, it's not any veteran. It's a disabled veteran. Okay. Uh, so. And the gold star. And then there are. Is, yeah. And it, so go, I'm sorry. So that means child killed and your child right. is killed in line right. of duty. So this provision exists now for spouses. Mm -hmm. So if you lose your spouse, you are exempt from property tax while you remain unmarried. Uh, and this would extend that same very, uh, I, I just can't call it a generous benefit. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a, that same recognition to the parents right. of a veteran. And, uh, so we looked at the cost impacts. The cost impacts are low, and I will give you a little chart of the qualifications. So who brought this to the warrant? Or the so this is a, a statute that passed the state legislature, and then it was forwarded to the assessors, and the assessors endorse it. Uh, staff brought it forward, so I think officially it's going to be recommended by staff, uh, probably myself and it may be myself and the assessors. I think the lawyer's looking at whether they can do that in a compliant way. Because we make, we'll make the motion on this particular article, right? It says motion. It says motion for the Brave Act. So okay. according so, to so Mr. I'll, I'll Sweeney, this be I'd probably be asking if someone's gonna say exactly, well, who gets I think the first one there, who, who gets this benefit. Right. Someone, I, I would expect someone else to know exactly yeah. who is. Yeah. The, the information is totally known, <coughs> and I will have a fact sheet for you by our next meeting. Okay. Because usually when you're talking about the property tax exemption, I think um, the tax assessor right. would, would step up and, and kind of explain exactly who gets sure. the exemption. The, the exemption there because there are yes so it's, it's a year over year thing that every year somebody asks well who, what exactly is this right and yeah you know, you know we've just put together a little booklet to help people understand this yeah. maze of benefits that are available okay. and so that's why I know as much as I know because I worked on editing that booklet 
Okay. But I just don't want to speak to it from memory. Okay. It'll actually be more so clear because we have the appropriation committee handout, which will explain every article. So we'll be able to get that information in there. The the um, the benefit brochure you're talking about is is it go beyond Brave Act? Is it? Also it does. It goes to the see all the senior. Uh, yep because there are different income thresholds so what we're really trying to do is take a, get to like a questionnaire format where like a, a turbo tax where we'd ask you is your income above this but below this and do you have this status are you over this age do you have some of them have asset tests mm -hmm. some of them have income tests yep. some of them have age tests Honestly, the only thing I've ever seen more complicated is fisheries enforcement, mm -hmm. where it's species, size, gear, and season. And this is the same kind of thing, where there's every dimension of qualification is different. So, and then people get lost in the maze, so we're trying to come up with a, a list of questions that will then steer people to what they're eligible for. So often people don't, until till it's too late, till they've, they're out of money and they don't realize they mm -hmm have the uh, opportunity to avail themselves of these benefits. Yeah. And then there's no going back. So we really want to, if we're going to have these and they're in law and some people are getting them, we want everyone to know about them. Do we do the ones where the seniors can um, not pay taxes and a lien goes against the house until they sell that, the house? That's another program where, where the, uh, it's a uh, tax deferral program. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's, that's in there. All these things to try to, uh, you know, and we hear this from the selectmen a lot and at working near the front desk downstairs where people come to pay their bills. Uh, there's a high sensitivity to try to help people stay in their homes who want to stay in their homes who've contributed for 40 years and we're doing everything we can within uh, the rules and to, to reach out and uh, provide the information people need to try to stay in, stay in their homes. So I think the tax uh, deferral is half. You can defer up to half, mm -hmm. which is quite a, can, can help people quite well. Exactly. And what it means is when you ultimately uh, transfer your house by moving or when you leave it, it that bill just accrues to that. Right. <clears throat> it's particularly here where the houses have um, increased for people value. who have been here for a long time, their, their values mm -hmm. have right. geometrically uh, <laughs> yes. increased. We don't um, we don't often deal with uh, tiffs in town, but you know I think that when we do, when we're you know talking to these new companies, one of the things that we should be considering is having some fund uh, that they're contributing to. You know, instead of instead of um, uh, giving them X amount of relief for taxes, uh, have it be X. You know. 0.75 uh, but that other 0.25 goes into this into this fund to help you know whether it's elders or veterans or whomever uh, with their taxes so that's an interesting idea and we'll look at that I mean you know we have the unified rate here and so we don't even uh, charge different rates between residential and commercial and industrial and and uh, we'd have to see what's statutorily authorized, whether that's... Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, just yeah. an idea you're throwing out. I, I get it. It's, it's, uh, and we're looking for ways to, to do I mean, you know, we have these other programs where people can volunteer and, and this and that. We've got, you know, we used to, uh, you know, send out something with your taxes, you know, saying, you know, do you want to contribute right. to help out in this pool? And it would be adding to a pool like that. Right. So. Absolutely. So that would be more like the, the uh, I don't know if it would be so much a TIF as the development agreements we have, the host community agreements where we get benefits, like we get people to commit to build a park or build sidewalks or to buy open space elsewhere in the town. Maybe that's the... the yeah, I don't know what it would be called. I mean, I see it as part of, you know, that whole tax incentive piece. Right. Um, but in the end, I think that it just benefits everybody you know I mean obviously it, it benefits the person that it's helping stay in their house it's benefiting the business because you know they're doing this great thing for the community and I think that it's uh, you know it's a good thing for the for the town as the government as well okay if there is the you know the statute I think everyone in town wants to help 
people in need, mm -hmm. but we also don't want to be a perception that we're that we're you know given all the money or given a benefit to only one individual. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be other people in town that aren't you know of age per se, but would require help, some sort of help. So maybe that would be more of a way to put money aside and have an ability to help people that all the people that need help. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Ready to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Four zero motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. See you Thursday. See you Thursday night.